Hello and welcome to another episode of Power Pact United States History. Today we are going to learn about the single most important piece of New Deal era banking legislation. And it still has a lot of importance today in American finance and politics. This is called Glass-Steagall. Now I know what you're thinking, how can a bird made out of glass have such an impact on American finances? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm going to simplify the 1932 Glass-Steagall Act and the Banking Act of 1933 by breaking it into critical pieces to make it much easier for you to utilize on your next big exam. The GSA was a way to reform the banking industry and it built barriers between investment and commercial banking activities. Oftentimes, these tests will ask you about FDR's alphabet soup, which is just a colloquialism for agencies that were established to combat the Great Depression. And these can be broken down into the three R's, relief, reform, and recovery. And if you can remember at the very least that Glass-Steagall was a piece of legislation aimed at long-term reform, then you already have a weapon at your disposal by the time the SAQ comes around. However, let's dig a little bit deeper. In the wake of the 1929 stock market crash, many people had placed their hard-earned savings in banks and they lost everything, without necessarily even making bad investments themselves. Banks don't just take your money and place them into a vault until you're ready to use it. They make their money by tallying the deposit as an IOU, and then you can withdraw any time and invest it into securities, which are stocks, loans, or just business ventures. So oftentimes though, these banks gambled away money that they couldn't get back. And in the case of the Great Depression, so 1929, they defaulted. So these guys, right behind me, Congressman Henry Stiegel from Alabama and Senator Carter Glass from Virginia penned Glass-Steagall as a way to keep people's money safe from overspeculation. So they ensured that customers could trust using the banks again. And they divided banking into two categories. And these are the categories that banking are today. Investment banking, and that's the type that you'll see at Wall Street where they help fund large companies or they trade stocks and securities and do risky investing. And then there's also commercial banking. And those are the types of banks that we go down to the street to put our money in or if we need a loan to start a chocolate taco handbag store, those are the places that we'll be going. And they told the banks that they had a choice between which type of banking they wanted to do. And then they set up legal barriers preventing them from mixing those two. And they also imposed some additional regulations like having the federal government insure your bank deposit. So whenever you walk up to a bank and you see that there's the FDIC stamp of approval, that's that government assurance that everything will be okay. If the bank loses your money, they'll back up at least $250,000. So they made sure that people had more confidence in investing in banks because there was a huge loss of confidence. And if you can't trust the banks, then you can't keep the money in the system and can't keep the flow of the economy. So they needed to jumpstart the economy by building trust with the banks once again. This was the law that they thought would be the best way to solve that problem. One of the cons of this legislation though, was that it really diminished the investing power of big American banks. European banks didn't have those same kinds of restrictions. So you could be a European bank and offer investing in commercial banking services and this made them a lot more competitive on the global market. Last Eagle was so harsh that even its namesake, the guy who helped pen it, Carter Glass, tried to repeal it quite soon after it was passed. And in 1999, so a long time after it was passed, uh, and that's also the year I was born, President Bill Clinton passed new legislation and overturned the GSA. Dividing banking into two industries is an example of the federal government growing its power during the New Deal. And Glass-Steagall regulation could be a great synthesis to progressive era reforms where the government stepped in to try to limit the power of big businesses. And today it's actually still a matter of debate on people of both sides of the political spectrum. Some are advocating for its revival because they see that it helped cause the 2008 stock market crash. However, some of the three biggest banks that did have a lot of investment practices that would have been prohibited by Glass-Steagall were not the only banks to cause the 2008 crash. There is a lot of debate amongst financial experts 
as to whether or not Glass-Steagall would even be effective. So some people think that regulation would be better if they just added financial barriers, not just legal barriers between dividing the two industries in the banking world. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Power Packed History. Hopefully you can keep in mind Glass-Steagall, not just a glass eagle, it's actually a legislation. And if you found the bare bones explanation useful that I just gave you, and you would like to see more like it, then don't be afraid to like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be making a lot more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.